What's up, YouTube? Michael here. And this is my UHF VHF antenna that I built and installed in my attic. It was taken from the design that I posted in my first video, and I'm not going to cover all the details of that antenna, but you can click the link above to learn how to build it. The difference between this one and the original is that the lead connecting wires will need to be 18 inches versus 15 inches as I show in the first video. Now the fractal bow tie part of this antenna is a UHF antenna. And then I have straight VHF elements added at the top. I ran my lead connections in a parallel manner, an additional 4 inches. Now I will say that since I don't have any low VHF channels in my area, which are channels 2 through 6, I'm not able to test it with those channels. But I do have one of the high VHF channels, channel 13. Now when I ran a test with my VHF elements at half wavelength, which was 28 inches, there was quite a bit of UHF signal loss. But having the VHF elements at one quarter wavelength, 14 inches, I didn't experience any signal loss at all, at least none that I could tell. So there is a threshold for how long these elements can be. Also, I did experience some loss when I added two, and I didn't really get any better reception, so one is enough. And the best part about it is that this antenna doesn't need any extra components or switches to work. It works as a single unit. One real cool thing about this antenna is that if your VHF station is in a different direction than your UHF stations, turning the VHF elements to any direction will not affect your UHF reception at all. In fact, turning them helps your VHF reception. Another thing, though, is that if you have this antenna too close to an electrical appliance like a microwave, a blender, or anything with a motor, it will cause a disturbance in your TV. So you might want to keep your antenna about 8 to 10 feet away from any of those kind of appliances. For instance, the antenna for our bathroom TV is directly above where my wife uses her air dryer. When she turns it on, it messes up the TV. So I put some aluminum foil on the floor of the attic directly above where she uses her dryer, and that helped quite a bit as a shield and was a big improvement. Well, that's about it. Here's a chart where I've already done the math for you, suggesting the length for the VHF elements. Channels 7 through 13, I'm very confident that they should work just fine. But as I mentioned earlier, channels 2 through 6 are untestable on my end. But perhaps you might have one of these channels in your area. I suggested 1 8 wavelength for these, and I'm not quite sure if that's going to work for you or not. But I would be very interested to know if this idea does work for you. So feel free to come back and leave a comment. And before I go, here's a few tips and tricks to help you get your antenna put together. By using a pair of metal snips, you can cut the wires while they're still in the sleeve. Then you can do a push-pull, push-pull kind of thing to get those wires out of the sleeve nice and easy. Holding the base upside down will help get those washers out of the way, so you can install your elements a lot easier. If you're mounting your antenna in your attic, use a small piece of wood to make a swivel that can attach to the roof beam so you can turn your antenna in any direction. Well, I hope this video was helpful. I appreciate you hanging around till the end. And I wish you the very best in your antenna building. Thanks for watching.